Hi guys, this is JNM and here is the next C++ tutorial in which I show how to use classes. We stopped the last part after I introduced structs. Well, basically structs and classes are the same. I will point out the difference in a moment, but for now I will just change this point struct into a class. So as I said, structs and classes have the same purpose. They group things together like member variables or member functions. We have two member variables here, x and y, and one function called toString. But when I compile now, you can see that it doesn't compile. Great. Okay, that leads us to the difference between structs and classes. Everything that you define inside of a struct is public. This means you can access it from the outside the struct. But when you define it in a class, then it is private by default. So what are these concepts that I use here, private and public, these sections? Well, they are called access modifiers. Now here you can see when I move my variables inside of a public section, it works again. But actually, I don't want this, I want them to be private. But why should I do this? Why should I make my variables private? and for example some methods public. Well, this concept is called encapsulation. Encapsulation leads to information hiding. I'm hiding internal stuff of this class from the user and I don't want him to change these internals. I want him to use a well-defined interface instead. This is done to reduce software development risks because it gives you the possibility to change the implementation of your class under the hood, but the interface, the public access for the user of the class stays as is. So let's implement this class. The first thing I add is a so-called constructor. The constructor is a method that is called when the object is created and the name of the function is the same as the class. I use two parameters here for the constructor for the point class of type double And I rename the member variables to m, x and m, y just to indicate that these are member variables. After that I initialize the member variables in the constructor. Okay, now we have two public methods, the constructor and the method toString. And again, it doesn't compile. Of course, because we defined the member variables as private. But we can solve this easily, because we can use the new constructor to initialize these variables of type point. Okay, but we still have some problems, because we are not allowed to read these private member variables x and y. So what do we have to do now? We have to define two public methods to read these values. So we are going to define two member functions called getX and getY inside of the public section of the point class. They don't do really much, they just return the member variables. So that's it and now we can use these two methods instead of using the member variables. All right, and look at this, it compiles. Great, we added our first class. And now we'll do something really strange. I will remove the whole implementation of our class because I want to show you how to separate the definition of the class from the implementation. So here you can see the point class is removed it is not known anymore. And then I right click here in my solution explorer, open the class wizard and add a new class called point2d. I think that's a better name. And you can see a header file point2dh and an implementation file called point2dcpp is generated. Okay, now I will re-implement this class, but I think this can be done really fast. First we need a constructor with two parameters, x and y, as before, but just the declaration. The implementation will be done 
in the CPP file later on. And what we also have here is a so-called destructor with the tilde symbol. This is called when the object is destroyed. After that, in the private section, I define again my two member variables mx and my. And the last declaration is the public function toString. Now I switch to the CPP file to add the implementation of the class. First I add the parameters to the constructor and then I initialize the member variables and I use a so-called initializer list. This is an alternative for assigning the parameters x and y inside of the constructor. Alright, and the last thing is the implementation of the toString and this is just a copy and paste. As you might have noticed here, and this is really important, when implementing a function inside of a CPP file, you have to write the name of the class first, followed by two colons and then the name of the function to be implemented. Ok, now we added the class, but we have to change a few things before we can use it again. Of course we have to change all appearances of point into point 2D because that's the new name of the class. But that's not all. Point 2D is still not known because we have to include the header file point 2D.h now for the files in which we want to use it. What is also missing is the two getter methods getx and gety that I'm going to add now directly here into the header file because they are just returning the member variables. So I don't move the implementation to the CPP file. The next thing that I add again is the namespace and I add this to the header and implementation file of the point2d class. And here are the last renamings and an include of the point 2D header. And then we are ready to start the application with our new class. And here we go, works as before. One thing that I want to mention is, instead of including this point 2D header in the mathops header file, you could also use a so-called forward declaration. This means in this case you just declare this point to D class instead of including the header, just to make it known. Not the implementation, but now it is defined that a class called point to D exists, which is enough to make the compilation work. The advantage of this approach is that you have shorter compile times and you don't add symbols by including the whole header that you might not need. Ok guys, that's it for this part. We will continue on object-oriented programming in the next C++ tutorial. I hope you find this useful and if you do then don't forget to subscribe to not miss the next tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching this and see you soon on JNM.